Hey guys, it's Feats here. This is kind of a follow-on from the For Honor State of the Game video. Anyway, if you've been following For Honor online as of late, you'll be aware of the increasing state of despair in the community, mainly aimed at Ubisoft. Last week we were supposed to get a community stream that was meant for the devs to be able to inform the community about upcoming changes and share any cool creations. Shortly before the stream went live, however, the servers went down and the stream was cancelled. This was the start of the community backlash. The stream was pushed back a week and this was pretty much the last communication we received for a while. On top of this, some people were claiming to have not received the rewards from the current round. None of these were particularly bad, however, what happened afterwards was. Despite the, out despite the outcry for communication, it never came leading to a huge backlash from the community, even calling for a community-run blackout event that called for all players to stop playing for Verona for at least 24 hours on the 3rd of April. So, why was this backlash so significant? For starters, the state of the game since launch has been comparable to a beta test, and this seems to be a recurring theme for Ubisoft as this was the same with Rainbow Six Siege upon release, which featured huge issues with networking. On top of these issues, two maps have been removed from play and there was no sign of them being returned. And the Reddit thread asking for community creations, with the disclaimer that they may be used by Ubisoft whenever they please, with no profit being given to the creators, also made for some interesting discussion, with a similar thread being made asking for Ubisoft to submit its creations. So the backlash has happened, what have Ubisoft done to address it? The first thing we heard back from Ubisoft was that one of the maps that was removed from play was being reintroduced after testing, and the other map would follow suit if the first didn't face any issues on the live servers. And whilst communication was restored, many were calling for the community to not forget about the previous lack of communication, which, in my opinion, is pretty fair. We've all played, paid for the game, whether it be the basic game or the collector's edition, and many of us have dumped money into the game for steel, which makes many of us want to see the game succeed and feel incredibly frustrated when things don't seem to be going well. Anyway, after this was a great step in the right direction. Ubisoft put out a post saying the community live stream would be put out much earlier, and at the time of creating this video, the stream has just finished. The stream is absolutely crucial to the community, as it is our method of communication with the developers. This is where we can learn what is being done to address any issues with the game, such as balance or networking, and see what creations the community have been doing. So, next came what many have perceived to be the turning point. Ubisoft addressed the lack of steel gains in-game by increasing the amount gained from matches and orders by a significant amount. All matches got a 25% increase to steel gains, and daily orders got a 33% increase, and side orders got a 50% increase as well as the community orders being increased to 2,000 steel as a reward. Ubisoft claims this can increase our daily income in the first two hours of play by as much as 45%. This is good. This is fucking great. As it stands, the customization options in-game are expensive, and with Ubisoft making comments such as people should only be playing two to three characters, many were in uproar, which is pretty fair. So, onwards to the results of the actual stream. The stream itself was fantastic, and this by far was the best stream we've had since the game was launched. It's addressed so many of the problems we were facing, and so many of the issues that were being complained about, mainly focusing on the game balance. So let's let's go through what was addressed. For starters, everyone's favourite class, the Peacekeeper, is receiving some well-deserved nerfs. Both the zone and dodge attacks on the Peacekeeper are being nerfed, and the devs are looking into nerfing the light light chain. The zone attack is definitely a good start as it's so incredibly fast and can be done at will with no repercussions. Compare that to the warden zone which, if blocked, results in a free guard break for your opponent. And dodge attacks however, uh, weren't too much of a problem in my opinion, but sure, definitely helps bring the class back down to a balanced level. The devs definitely need to look at the light attacks however, as this is most people's main issue with the peacekeeper, but it's a start and it's a good one at that. Next up, the Warlord is receiving a nerf to the headbutt, the dodge window is being increased and the headbutt itself is being given a much longer recovery time if it misses. 
He's also being prevented from activating the headbutt from all block, unless he manages to block an attack. This is great. Currently the headbutt is incredibly difficult to dodge, and whilst it is punishable with a guard break afterwards, it takes a very good reaction speed to be able to avoid it. Now, my favourite class, the Lawbringer, is receiving buffs across the board. Like, goddamn last. Finally, might be able to go back to enjoying the Lawbringer again as I played it from release up to Reputation 4 and then gave up with it. His damage is being increased on the majority of attack chains and their speed is also being increased. A side heavy is also being guaranteed after the long arm, which is the attack that throws opponents over your head. Hyper armor is being added to the zone attack, and impale is becoming guaranteed after a parry. I'm so excited for these changes. Perhaps the Lawbringer in 1v1 is going to become a force to be reckoned with. The impale change after the parry is interesting and I'm sure that's going to lead to many people being thrown off or into environmental dangers. So next up, the Nabushi is having its hidden stance fixed so that the analog stick area is similar to all block on other characters which is apparently going to make it easy to use. No comment on this one really, I use the keyboard and mouse so this doesn't affect me. Gear is also being changed which has been a huge request from the community. Debuff resistance is no longer going to affect the window for countering guard breaks after parries. Revenge gain by defense and injury will also be reduced. And revenge attack and duration will be reduced as well. The revenge changes are huge and hopefully gear is going to become less of a factor. As right now in 4v4 game modes the impact it can have is huge. Especially looking at max gear players being able to trigger revenge very frequently and do insane amounts of damage. Buffs have also been mentioned for the Berserker and the Kenze, as well as a small nerf for the Conqueror, uh, with changes being mentioned for the Raider and Orochi, but not in the next patch. Any non-mentioned changes, we'll get to see them in the patch notes, as they didn't have time to cover everything in the stream. I'm really hoping that the Raider gets to see some love, as currently, whilst in the hands of a good player, he can be very strong, he doesn't have that many options. So it kind of seems like Ubisoft may have learnt their lesson in this case after the repercussions that occurred. And if they fail to communicate with us, I'm sure this is going to happen again. But I'm really hoping that these changes keep coming and that we gain, get the game as balanced as possible for rank modes, which we should see coming in the next few months. And I'm honestly excited for the future of this game. and I really want to see it be successful, as its combat system is incredibly unique and fun the graphics are outstanding, and the game even has a good campaign to go with it. So, that's it for now guys. I'm working on some Warden videos at the moment, but getting good footage is proving a little difficult. Once the changes to Lawbringer come out, I'll definitely be looking at producing some content for it. And, as always, if you enjoyed the video, that's great. And if not, leave me a comment telling me why. Feeds out.